What's going on everybody? Welcome to my design lounge. It's looking and feeling extra cool this morning. It must be all of the red and purples that are giving it such a cool vibe, plus my new Zero shirt. Anyway, today I'm going to be creating this Queen Night at the Opera poster based on Swiss design and principles. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so I have here set up my Swiss grids, um, and if you haven't uh, if you haven't checked out the video where I teach you how to set this up, then go check it out. I'll um, I'll actually leave a link for you. So um, I've got the grids uh, grid system set up here, and the first thing that we need to do with this, since uh, the design uh, elements themselves are going to be you know sort of basic, you know that that's uh, that's kind of how we do things uh, when it comes to Swiss design posters. Is first thing we need to do is we need to find. Um, an, uh, a color palette. Sorry, I can't talk this morning. All right, so Queen Night at the Opera album cover. And I'm going to get a large uh, version of this. And this one looks really good. So I'm going to open this in a new tab. And then this is a this side is a really cool tool right here. You can generate a color palette from a URL. So it's pretty awesome. Just put the image in, click on Get Palette, and then you've got this complete uh, color palette right here, which is really cool actually. So I am going to select this portion of it, and that should save it directly to my desktop. And then I'll just go grab it and drop it right here into Illustrator. And there we go, here is our uh, co uh, color palette right here. I may do a couple of adjustments uh, when it comes to, you know, um, making a little bit more dimension um, uh, for this and everything. So, um, okay, so let's go ahead and get started with our typography. And when I create a Swiss design poster, I like to go ahead and get everything out of the way that I know is gonna go on the poster in terms of the type. So I'm gonna go ahead and type this out. I'm gonna hide the grids uh, just for now. And let's see, it's called A Night at the Opera. And let's see, released in 1975, I believe. Um, I'll, I'll go in and I'll, I'll actually go to the trusty Wikipedia page for this album and I'll get the official release date, okay? And since I am an American, I'm going to format this the American way. <laughs> um, I've been uh, I've been listening to this album a lot lately. I took um, I took a trip uh, up to Louisville, Kentucky to go see Tool, and on the way up and the way back, I actually listened to this album, and my gosh, it's amazing. Uh, I've heard it so many times before, but here recently, it's just been hitting differently with me, especially um, especially when you're in the car by yourself and you're listening to I'm in love with my car. Um, I'm not particularly lo in love with my car. I drive a Corolla, um, <laughs> but... Um, but, but that, that song just is, uh, is just awesome. It's very powerful. Um, okay. So these are everything. These are all of the text items I think that I'm going to put on there. And then I think that I'll list the band members. And, you know, we'll just do something like that, you know, just kind of give them a little bit of credit there. I'm so sorry. I can never remember the other guy's name. It's like there's Freddie, there's Brian, there's Roger, and there's the other guy. And I'm sorry. I'm very, very sorry. I can never remember his name. So, and, and, and every time I see it, I'm like, oh yeah, oh, John Deacon. That's it. John Deacon. Okay. So copy that. So sorry if I've offended anybody by not remembering John Deacon's name. Okay. All right. So, this uh, this color palette uh, right here, it's kind of, I mean, it's obviously generated from the album cover itself, but it is a little bit murky. <laughs> so, um, it's a, well, I guess I could say it's a little bit mercury. Eh? Any dads out there? Okay, uh, sorry. I, I, I'm very, very sorry for that. All right, so let's go ahead and copy this image right here. That way we can get, see if we can get a little bit more a um, little bit more visual interest out of these uh, out of these colors right here. Okay, so I haven't really planned out what the geometric shapes are going to look like, um, but I I don't know for some reason I, I like I always envision circles, and it's probably because there's a big circle on this album cover. So I think I'm going to do some kind of 
uh, geometric layout uh, with uh, with circles, um, you know, like globes or maybe even something that kind of looks like bubbles, um, I, like well maybe not bubbles but um, at least not intentionally. But I think that it, they may end up kind of looking like that. Um, I think that I'm going to make this, since the focus is the actual album, I think I'm going to reverse these right here. And first thing I want to do, let's bring back our grid. And I'm thinking that let's go ahead and just kind of drop some random uh, elements here. I'm going to lock my guides. Make sure that they, I should have done that before. I'm sorry. Um, okay, so uh, let's see here. Maybe something like I'm just gonna kind of experiment around for a minute. And um, you know what? I'm actually gonna go ahead and speed up this portion of the video, just because I want to really spend some time in making sure that I get this the way that I want it to look. I really want it to be a nice poster in the end. So I'm gonna go ahead and start speeding up now. Okay, so much for not making this look like bubbles, but I'd like to add a little bit, um, let me think just for a second, I'd like to add maybe a little bit of extra dimension uh, to this. So I think what I'll do is I, I did a copy and paste in place, and then I'll, I think I'll do kind of similar to what I did with the, um, with the Happy Gilmore poster that I did. where we'll just kind of, maybe we'll do a brightened version of this yellow right there. It's pretty cool. <clears throat> Let's see what it looks like if I reverse it. Okay, I kind of, well, I don't know which one I like better. I think I kind of like that better actually. So I think I'll do the darker version on the outside. And I think that that may be a little bit too big. So yeah, okay, that's good. That's good right there. All right, so we'll do the same thing with the rest of these and I'll go ahead and speed this up. Okay, that is looking pretty cool, I think. All right, so all of them now have uh, kind of a little bit of dimension there, and, and all that we did was just uh, just kind of bring uh, was just kind of bring forward the um, sorry bring forward the circle shape, and then the one behind it is just a little bit darker. So it's it's amazing what you can do, uh, what simple things you can do just to bring about a little bit of uh, dimension. And while I was doing this, I was thinking to myself, you know, you could do something like a blend right here where it just kind of blends those uh, colors continuously. But this is not really something that you tend to see in Swiss design. So it's not necessarily breaking the rules. I mean, there's definitely there's definitely gradation. You can see gradation in, um, in uh, Swiss posters. Um, but it's a little bit too, you know, I don't know, I guess 3D little bit too effect heavy for me uh, for what I'm going for here so um, and like and I was I was actually gonna say this earlier you don't have to lay down your elements first uh, you can lay down the text first it doesn't really matter like there's not really there's not really a hard and fast rule there so um, really the the key is just to make sure that you have your grid set up and you've got all of your elements that are actually aligned to the grid and you're pretty much in good shape okay all right so let's go ahead and bring our type in and as far as the placement goes I haven't made any kind of plan where this is gonna go yet but let's bring back our grid and 
if we align it to the, if we, if we come up here and align this text box to the grid, then it'll just kind of align right there. Um, I'd like to actually align the text itself to the grid, not just, not the text box. So I think I'll do that. And I like, let's see how we can break this up a little bit. Just kind of get rid of those guys. I think uh, right there up against that yellow, uh, that yellow shape right there uh, is good. You've got a really good contrast uh, going on there. I'm going to go ahead and set this to optical kerning, and we'll go in and we'll actually um, manually adjust that kerning here in just a second. Um, I think that that is good for the tracking. And let's go in here and just kind of see what we can clean up, uh, what whatever optical alignment didn't uh, pick up on. So I'm just kind of bring this in just a little bit. The space between those are good, I think. Um, it's good here. I may tighten this up just a touch. Uh, also this, let's bring this in a little bit. This is good, and then that's actually good right there. Okay, and um, I don't anticipate adding any kind of effects in Photoshop. Um, the uh, if I do anything at all, it'll be like a maybe a slight grain or something like that. So what we'll do is we'll come over here and we'll just kind of brighten this up a little bit, maybe around 15% black, because um, that right there will actually allow. Um, any of that grain uh, to, to show uh, to show up in the text itself. So one of the things is it, like if you've got like a black background with white text or a white black uh, white background with black text, if you've got any kind of effects there, then those effects are going to get lost in pure white and pure black. So always remember that. All right, not at the opera, and I'm gonna just bring this over right over here. So we have this uh, at 150. And generally a good rule of thumb is to take whatever your main heading is and just kind of divide it by two. You know, basically the, you know, half the size of it. And I'm gonna make this the same color. So hold down shift with your eyedropper to pick up just on the color. Uh, that way it doesn't, that way it doesn't pick up the font size as well. And I think I'm gonna bring this up to about right here. Maybe, maybe one inch down actually, I think that is, I think that's good. Um, I'll try, I may try a different placement for Queen, but we'll see how that works out. Um, the names right here, I'd like, to, I'd like for these to go down at the bottom and we will bring this, uh, the bottom text uh, baseline and we'll align that to the grid right here. And let's go ahead and bring this all the way over here. If you're OCD like I am, then this uh, stuff like this can become a nightmare. You will be forever adjusting uh, the placement of your elements, especially when it comes to text. Okay, let's get that D right there. So basically, like you know, you've got you've got the the bottom of the ba baseline the baseline the baseline right there and then you've got some letters right here that are at, that actually kind of descend below the baseline so um, you want to pay attention to aligning uh, aligning the text to whatever line is at the at, like at the actual bottom of the baseline as standard and not including the descenders that go underneath the baseline so as you can see we've got the D and the N are both cut off and totally flat there. That That's your standard baseline. The E, the A, C, and the O, in this case, actually um, descend below the baseline. So make sure that you are, are aligning, you know, things like T's, D's, M's, N's, and, you know, basically any letter that doesn't descend beneath the baseline and I feel like I just keep saying baseline over and over again so I'm gonna stop uh, okay so let's align that R right there I think that's good and I think this may have shifted up just a little bit so let's go back down here okay all right so now we want to make sure that these are all ev evenly spaced out and I think that Actually, you know what? I just realized I've got to resize these. <laughs> um, so um, I'll actually come back to that in just a second, but that's in general where I want it to be. I want it to be at the bottom. 
All right, so let's do the release date. Bring this up right here. Um, I think that we may do something like this. We're just kind of missing something in this general area. So let's align that right there. And we'll just set that at 75. We can get rid of this 1975 right here. All right, so in this case, if we're gonna do this, if we're, if we're gonna have this over here, I may bring queen right about here, visually, you know, just to kind of visually go in between this area and this area right here, and we'll bring it, uh, we'll make sure that this is aligned to the grid, and that is right there. And we'll also do the same thing up here. We gotta align this to a grid. We already have it on the right side, we just gotta do it on the top. Very good. Okay. All right, I think, okay, so now what we have to do here, um, and actually, it just occurred to me, something that I haven't done yet on any of these is set them to optical alignment. And let's go in and Curve this up just a little bit. We won't have to make too many adjustments. Okay, that's looking good. Actually, that's a little bit too tight. Let's kind of open that up just a little bit. Good. Night at the Opera, November 21st, 1975. Queen. Okay, let's um, do this. One thing I might try is queen in all caps now I think I like this better okay so now that we've got the the name of the band let's go in here and really make sure that we do a good job with the kerning I think this is good between those two spaces are good let's see what we got here this negative 30 we'll do the same thing here actually I think I'll bring it in just a little bit more good 75 and then these right here will be half the size, and they already are. Good. So let's uh, let's do this. Let's space them out. Let's distribute them evenly, and let's realign these because we messed that up uh, earlier by not having the correct uh, font size, and also kerning and tracking things like that. But just holding down the shift key to make sure that I don't move it left or right. I'm only moving it down. Perfect. All right. So we've got some text that's overlapping um, uh, the, the actual elements, and there's certainly nothing wrong with that. Uh, what you want to what you want to try to avoid though is having something like this where. That R right there is literally right next to this. You either want it to be obviously overlapping or not overlapping at all. So I think what we'll do here is since we have this uh, circle aligned to the grid, we'll just kind of bring this in a little bit. Maybe three and a quarter. I think that looks, I think that sounds good. So let's see what it looks like overall. Good. And. I think that as, as far as this goes, all of the elements are there exactly as I want it. So I'm gonna go ahead and make, uh, I'm gonna draw an actual background shape here so that I can carry everything over uh, into Photoshop. All right, so I got this pasted uh, over here in Photoshop, and like I said earlier, I'm not gonna, I'm, I'm really just gonna add a little bit of a grain effect here. I'm not gonna do anything crazy uh, with this because generally with Swiss uh, Swiss posters, um, you you may see a little bit of a grain uh, overlay, and it's very very slight. Um, and it's really just to kind of help achieve that aged look just a little bit. So real, real subtle. And we're not gonna do any kind of text effects or anything like that. It's just, you know, it's just gonna be very flat, uh, flat design, which is the whole, the whole purpose uh, behind uh, Swiss design. And I just realized, um, <laughs> I even broke my own rule. <laughs> so I actually made this background pure white. I'm not supposed to do that. All right, so let's just kind of make it something like that. 
I, I would like maybe a little bit of saturation in here. All right, so let's bring this over. We should just be able to paste it directly underneath that grain layer. Okay, now the grain is actually showing up there. Um, however, it is like, I mean, I'm at 100% view and I can barely, barely see it. So I think I'm actually gonna reset this and reapply this grain to where it's a little bit, I mean, we obviously, if we're gonna put it there, then, you know, we, we wanna make sure that uh, the person can actually see it. So, um, maybe like this. Okay, we're, we're getting there. Sorry, I gotta reapply this. I think I'm just gonna go 50 and maybe 50 uh, just 50 for everything. Okay, yeah, this this is better. So we're, I don't know how well you can see it um, on your end, but like, you know, right here I'm looking at the, looking at it on my iMac and it's looking really good. I can actually see that slight grain just being applied to everywhere. Not so much the background, but definitely in the elements themselves. So here is here it is, final Night at the Opera. Uh, Swiss design poster by Queen done in uh, Adobe Illustrator and Photoshop Well, I hope you enjoyed watching me make that Queen night at the opera poster. It was a lot of fun I've been listening to that album a lot lately, and I just I love it the more I listen to it If you like this video, please hit like and subscribe at the bottom and also click the bell for notifications You'll get notified every time I upload a new video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Have a great day. Bye-bye